Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at the new and improved Boya BYM1 Pro. Is it worth the extra price premium? Let's find out. Okay, so today's video we'll be taking a look at the new and improved Boya BYM1 Pro. Now this is an enhanced version of the already pretty much stellar microphone, the BYM1, which actually is the microphone that I'm using to record now, and I've been using pretty much for the last three years, pretty much consistently every single day. So it's worked very, very well. Although yesterday I did do a video and there were some very odd kind of crackles coming into the audio. I'm not too sure where it came from, but I figured well, it's about time I tried a new mic anyway. So I had a look on Amazon, see what was available. And to be honest with you, I was very tempted just to go with the BYM1, just get another one as a spare, just in case this one is on its way out. It has had a extremely hard life. It's been stood on, stretched, you name it. It's had all sorts done to it. And pretty much it's only had one battery change. So it has been absolutely stellar. So that was the reason behind me possibly getting another one. But looking a little bit deeper into amazon.co.uk, I found this one, the BYM1 Pro. So this is a slightly improved version. It's got some very minor tweaks to it to make it a little bit better. And there is a very, very slight price premium. This one adds on about an extra four pounds in price. The original, the BYM1, you can pick up for about 15 pounds. This one was 19 pounds, but does offer a slightly better response on the microphone. So it's 78 dB opposed to 74 dB for the previous version. You still get that same legendary long six meter cable to go from you all the way around the desk or wherever it is to your camera. So the camera at the moment is probably about two meters away from me and the cables are all nicely hidden. So if you don't want to be tethered directly to your camera and have a little bit of room to move around, this is a fantastic microphone. Also, it does work with smartphones and normal DLSRs, PCs, laptops, all those kinds of things. But again, we'll get into that a little bit later. But for me, it is the choice of microphone, especially when labs are concerned. Other cool features which it now has integrated is there is a 10 dB cutoff, so you can actually reduce the volume. So if you're someone who maybe has uh, really defined S's or P's, some sort of vocalization that you don't want, or maybe you're just filming in a particularly noisy environment, you can flick the switch and reduce the input by about 10 dB. And obviously then in post-production, if you want to, you can then bring that back up and it will remove some of the kind of bits and pieces in the background, which you don't necessarily want. So we'll see how that goes in the testing a little bit later on. But let's go in straight into it and do the unboxing and see what we actually get for the money. Now, talking of the boxing, the packaging looks pretty much exactly the same as the previous version. Uh, the only real differences being is there is an extra switch on the actual capsule itself. Uh, it still says on the front, smartphone, tablet, computer, and camera. So you can use it on all those devices. It has got a TRRS type plug on it which also is compatible with TRS. So TRS is normally for PCs, uh, DLSRs, cameras, that kind of thing. The TRRS is normally for mobile phones and certain laptops, that kind of thing. But if you're not too sure, ask away in the comment section and we'll try and work out what it is you actually got. Uh, moving around onto the back, it goes back to some of the features. So features are a clip-on mic for smartphones, DLSRs, camcorders, audio recorders, PC, etc. High quality condenser, ideal for video use. And yeah, we definitely proved that over the last three years. Uh, low handling noise includes a lapel clip, a LR44 battery, foam windscreen, and a quarter inch jack adapter. Uh, also, you can play back headphones monitoring in smartphone mode. This is one of the little gimmicky things which I wasn't really sure about. On the bottom of the unit, there is actually an input, so you can plug in a set of headphones for monitoring, but that seems to only work with smartphones in kind of playback mode, so it means you don't have to keep on unplugging and plugging the jack phone in. I was hoping that it would be constant monitoring in both the PC and also the camera mode, all that kind of thing, so I could actually hear what is going on, but unfortunately that isn't the case. So um, I feel a little bit misled with that really, but again, it's nice to have the feature if you are using this with a smartphone for playback purposes, that kind of thing. Uh, specification wise, so it's an electric condenser microphone on the directional frequency range between 70 Hertz and 18 kilohertz. Uh, signal to noise ratio is 78 dB or more. Sensitivity is minus 30 dB, plus or minus 3 dB uh, to 0 dB, uh, 1 kilohertz. Output impedance is 1,000 ohms or less. Connector is a 3.5 mil jack, as we said, or it also includes a adapter as well. Accessories included, lapel clip LR44 battery, foam windscreen and quarter inch adapter, etc. Battery type LR44. They're making a big point of this LR44. Also, the pad switch has 0 or minus 10 dB. And dimensions, well, 
doesn't really show the dimensions, it just says the length of the cable, so six meter cable, and the weight of it is 58 grams. So that's all out of the way, let's take a look and see what we actually get. And actually at some point I will stop the video and plug in this microphone to the camera using exactly the same settings. We'll see what the difference is in the quality and also test out the dB reduction. So inside the packaging, first of all, we've got a instruction manual or instruction guide tells you all about the main features, introduction, etc. features, how to change the battery. Uh, how to move it with a smartphone, how to use it with a laptop, how to use it with a camera, all those kinds of things. Hopefully that's come up on the screen as B-roll so you can see that nice and clearly. Also inside we get the quarter inch jack adapter, so it's 3.5 mil to quarter. We've also got the uh, lapel clip there and also a foam windscreen. And inside itself, what else have we got? There's something else in there. There is a warranty card which you can fill out. Actually, first of all, I should have noticed this. This is the kind of leatherette bag. Those of you that got a Boya BYM1 already will recognize this. It's uh, very familiar. This one actually feels a slightly better quality than the previous one. So uh, the other one was actually fine. It hasn't had any rips, tears, or nicks in it. So it's done the job. And hopefully this will do the same. It's a drawstring bag. So obviously you can keep all your bits safe and secure inside there. So the actual microphone itself. So as you can see, you've got the electric microphone on the end there, and there's a, about a meter cable between this and the actual capsule itself. This has got a little belt clip on it, so you can clip onto your belt or side of a t-shirt, I don't know, something. It's basically it's a clip, you can attach it to yourself. And on there, on the barrel, is various features. So we've got the zero and minus 10 dB, so you can flick that on and off. And these switches actually are really, actually quite stiff as well. So it's going to be very difficult to accidentally turn it on or off whilst talking. And actually, I, disclaimer, I have actually done that in the past with my boy. I've, I've accidentally turned it off whilst recording, which was uh, extremely unfortunate. So on this side, you've got the switch between camera and turning off or in smartphone mode. So basically, when it's in camera mode, it is powered using the battery. When it's in the off mode, it's in smartphone mode as well, and that's not using any battery at all. I've got to be honest, I haven't used it very much with a smartphone at all. I've used it primarily with a camera, which is a Lumix G7, and then I've upgraded to a Lumix G80. And with this, it's been absolutely brilliant. I've had a few complaints about me uh, having it like a dry or moist mouth, etc. But other than that, the sound quality has been absolutely phenomenal. And even though we're in a relatively small room, which isn't really set up for filming, there's no acoustic padding or anything on the walls. This is literally as it is. And I think the sound quality is absolutely fantastic. So if you're torn between the two, to be honest with you, both of them, I hope, are going to sound pretty much, well, identical, really, apart from possibly the noise reduction on the Pro version. Okay, anyway, moving on. So we've got the, uh, the bundled up cable there, and there's a strap there to keep it all nice and tidy. And again, this is a six meter cable, which is absolutely huge. So if, say for instance, you're setting up a studio, and maybe you want to have um, a lav mic, but you don't really want it attached to you, maybe you want to set it up somewhere, you could actually quite easily put it into some kind of magic arm or something and have it just slightly out of shot. You've got enough cable in there to run it around the arm, down again and into your camera. So for those kinds of setups, absolutely perfect. Or maybe if you're going out and about, maybe you're doing pieces to camera, but you don't want to be right up in front of the camera, you can get yourself quite far back. Essentially, because it's a six meter cable, if your camera is roughly about two meters high, you're about two meters high, so you've got at least two meters between you and the camera. So that's a good six, seven foot, which for most people is more than enough distance to get between the camera. Um, yeah, that is pretty much most of it. So to take it apart and to fire it up, you unscrew the top part of the capsule, and normally there is a little bit of plastic in there to stop the battery from going flat in transit. So we'll, uh, we'll just pull that out. That's in there pretty well. This is actually a bit of an upgrade as well. There is actually like a pull tag there to actually help remove the battery. Uh, the previous one didn't have that. There was, you had to struggle with a, a screwdriver or your nails to try and get the battery out. So it's nice to see a little pull tab there to enable you to remove that LR44 battery a little bit easier. So that is that turned on now and ready to go. So all we need to do now is to attach our lapel clip, which we'll do. Now, do bear in mind what the audio is like currently and all the noises you can hear, background noises, etc. Our cat is actually in here scratching away. And this is our dining room effectively. So the noises that you hear in the videos, um, although pretty much unintentional, they are part of modern life. So hopefully with this, with the, uh, the 10 dB cutoff, we might be able to eliminate some of that, but we'll see how it goes. So with the clip itself, once you've got the actual uh, wind muff on there, 
you can just snap that into position. I'm not sure I remember how I do this now. So that way round, yes, that'd be the way I have it. I think, no, that way. I think that's right. I'll work it out. Some people don't use the clip at all. You can basically just get the microphone, use some tape, uh, attach it underneath your t-shirt. I actually did a video on how to do that, which you can uh, check out up here if you want to. It is quite an old video, so do be kind. But here's another way of mounting it. You don't have to use this clip at all, but I actually quite like using it. So that's enough jibber jabber. Let's get on with it and we'll plug this in now. We'll have a, a brief break while I plug this in and then we can come back and see what it actually sounds like. Okay, so we've got everything connected up now. A slight change. Kath actually came up with a fantastic idea. It doesn't happen often, so I thought I'd take advantage of it. The Lumix G80, which is over there, which Kath is manning, uh, currently has the Lumix, sorry, currently has the Boya BYM1, the original version, which is the microphone on my left, which is your right. And my overhead camera, which is the Lumix G7, has the BYM1 Pro attached to it. Currently, they're both set to the same audio gain, so they're both set to uh, minus 6 dB in camera. That's for both of them, so they are going to be very similar. The preamps actually in the Lumix G7 and G8 versions are all some, well, pretty much identical, so it's, it's very hard to tell the difference between them volume-wise, so this should give a pretty good uh, kind of choice between the two, so you should, hopefully you should be able to hear it pretty well. They're both mounted in very similar areas, so they should pick up exactly the same. You'll be the judge of that, obviously, and when I go through the edit, I'll try and make sure that they level out as much as possible. If they're really way out, then I will try and adjust them slightly, and I will notify you of that. I will put something on the screen now so you can see if there is any adjustments going on. Uh, currently, this particular one, the capsule is set to the 0 dB, so this is as it sounds straight out of the device. Um, obviously, the BYM1, the original one, doesn't have the cut, so you can't do that. But how does it sound? Does it sound any better? Can you really notice any uh, big difference or is it sound the same same sort of tonal quality? Is it slightly louder? Is it picking up more? Um, if I stay very quiet for a second and see if you can actually pick up any background hiss. It is pretty quiet in here, but we do have a PC over there about two meters away from me. There's a PC behind, there's fans, obviously you've got electrical equipment, all that kind of stuff. So possibly some noise could creep in, but hopefully it still sounds pretty good. Normally the wind muff and also the fact that I'm wearing clothing t-shirt wise, that generally covers up most of it. Normally I would have both of these microphones actually hidden behind my t-shirt. So they're out of the way. And also that does obviously shield out some of the noise as well. I have deliberately got a chewing gum in at the moment as well. So I'm chewing away as we go and see what noises they, that picks up. That's probably gonna upset a lot of people. ASMR for Frito, can't beat it. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much the noise test that we wanna do with that. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna switch this down to the minus 10 dB and see what the noise levels are like then. So now we are at minus 10 dB. Again, if I do find it's way too low, I will increase it in post-production in Adobe Premiere which generally doesn't add any additional noise, but it does amplify it. So hopefully you can still hear what it sounds like and hopefully it still sounds nice and crisp and clear. And just as a comparison now, if I'll switch back over to the G80 with the Boya BY M1 and you can see what the difference in quality is like and also if there's any background noises which are creeping in. So if I'm silent a minute, I'll um, see what happens there. So hopefully on screen then it said which microphone is on at which time, so you can decide for yourself which sounds better. And at the moment, obviously, I don't know. This is the first time I've unboxed it, the first time I'm trying it. So it could be really good. It could be exactly the same. It could be no difference at all. To be honest with you, even if there was no difference at all, I would probably still get this one anyway. I do prefer these switches. They are a little bit better to use. The other ones were a little bit softer. And actually the cabling I do find on this does seem to be uh, marginally better. A little bit more, I'll say pliable, that's probably the wrong word, but just seems a little bit more substantial. The actual capture itself seems exactly the same as still that kind of rugged metal design. And uh, yeah, it works out pretty well. So I think that's pretty much enough. I've rabbited on far too long as it is, but hopefully this gives you an insight of what these two microphones actually sound like. Really, I suppose I should have done a comparison with actually just no microphone at all just using the in-body cameras, but uh, uh, sorry, the in-body microphones in these cameras. But to be honest with you, they do sound horrendous. So these mics are certainly a massive, massive gain 
when it comes to your audio quality and making YouTube or whatever content is you're doing. Maybe you're filming a wedding, whatever the case may be, these mics are really, really worth it in my opinion. And for the very kind of minimal outlay, I think they do add an incredible amount to your production qualities. So there we go, there's been the Boya BY-M1 and also the Boya BY-M1 Pro. You decide which one you think is best. Affiliate links will be in the video description for both of them if you want to check them out for yourselves. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're back now from the end of the video after watching it and editing it. And I've got to be honest with you, I was feeling a little bit underwhelmed with the performance of the BY-M1 Pro. Definitely it was lacking some of the bass that the BY-M1 had. And with the 0 dB or the minus 10 dB, and then for me upping it in Premiere Pro, it did seem to increase some of the noise levels and it didn't sound particularly good. So I'm a little bit concerned that it actually isn't as good as the BYM1, which is gonna be a real shame. So what I wanted to do was to, because I had two different cameras, possibly there could be different settings or whatever. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm currently recording on the BYM1, which currently is my preferred device. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna quickly stop filming and then we're gonna plug in the other microphone to see a direct, response and obviously I'll try and edit so there's very close together or sandwiched together so you can actually hear what it sounds like so we're going to stop right now so now we are on the Boya BY M1 Pro so this has been a direct replacement literally all we've done is unplugged the cable from the camera and plugged in the other microphones so none of the settings are changed exactly the same preamps all the filters any settings I've got are purely in camera and there's no difference at all so this is now the sound quality of the BY M1 Pro and uh, again, I'm still to see what this is actually like in post. So hopefully it does sound good and as good, if not better than the original one. Personally, I really did enjoy the sound profile of the BYM1. So it would be a real shame if they've uh, kind of ruined it in some way. So let's quickly go back to the BYM1. And now we're back onto the BYM1, the original version. So again, this has been a little bit of a trial and error thing. So hopefully the audio now sounds pretty much identical in both, or at least I would hope that the BYM1 Pro sounds better. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Obviously, it depends on you guys because you're the ones who are listening to it. So if you prefer the sound of the BYM1 Pro, then that's the one we'll stick with. If you prefer the nice, rich sound of the BYM1, or at least in my opinion, then let us know in the comments section and that'll be the one that we get. Or at least I'll order another one to replace this existing one. Anyway, I've rubbed on far too long yet again. Please do let us know in the comments what you think. See you in the next one.